Hi everyone. Today I'm going to run you through how to process map to a high level. Now, first of all, you're going to need some equipment to process map. Thankfully, capturing the initial process can be relatively low tech. So you'll only need a few great big oily pizzas to get the key stakeholders engaged, a large ream of brown paper, some sharpie pens, and some post-it notes. This way, you can easily move things around, take things out. Uh, you can also show your inputs, your outputs, with the different colors uh, on the post-it notes. Or if you're using the triester noun verb methodology, one post-it note color is, can be for activities, one can be for deliverables, and one can be for decisions. Now, if you're not as fancy as brown paper, sharpies, and post-it notes, you can also just use the office whiteboard. Um, that's exactly what we're about to do here because it's easier to show you the process um, than it would be on the brown paper. So today, I'm going to show you how to capture the process of making a hot drink using process mapping. This could be any process, but the key thing is to define what the process actually is and give it a scope so you know where it starts and where it finishes. So let's give our process map a title. Now in the noun verb methodology, the title must start with a verb. So our title will be make the hot drink. Cool. We've now got our title. Next, we're gonna to have to narrow the focus by defining the three parts to a process map, which are the deliverables, which I'll write in blue, activities, which I'll write in green, and decisions, which I'll write in red. The different colors are key for distinguishing between and also placing a value on process steps. Now, an activity has zero value to your organization. It costs time, money, and effort. And the deliverable is actually the part which has the value to your organization. That's why it's important to give them these different colors so you can see the value. In order to have a process, there must be a motivating factor or a need. The motivation for creating a hot drink, therefore, is the existence of a thirsty person who will become our first deliverable. You'll need two deliverables to start with, one at the beginning and one at the end. These will bookend the process and signal the start and end of the process. In order to make this clear, we encourage different organizations to use the words, show me the, when trying to think of the deliverable, as in, show me the thirsty person. This makes it easier to identify what your deliverable actually is. Now the last deliverable that we'll, we will uh, finish the process with, um, in this case, it will be a hot drink or show me the hot drink. So you have two deliver deliverables, one at the start and one at the end. I'm gonna put hot drink at the end. So now you have your start deliverable and you have your end deliverable. So we will write down in our decision color red type of hot drink. You can then choose your deliverables. Now for the purposes of this, there are only three hot drinks that have been considered. Those are going to be tea, coffee, or hot chocolate. You could get a lot more specific with a lot more deliverables, but we will stick with those three here. So we will draw up three boxes, one with tea, one with coffee, and one with hot chocolate. So we have our deliverable, we have our decision, and then the decision comes to these three deliverables. Next, you'll need to gather the equipment to make that hot drink a reality. This might include a coffee pot, a filter, teapot, cups, jug, kettle. However, since this is a high level, we want to go down that route and just stick with the activity. Um, the name is going to be gather the equipment. So in our activity color, which is green, we're going to say gather the equipment. And remember, that's a, ver uh, that's a verb. It starts with a verb. You've got to find a verb for that one. So this one is gather. So now the deliverable for gather the equipment it's pretty easy. It'll just be the equipment. Now you have the equipment after you've gathered it. This may seem like a duplication and a, and a quite simple explanation, but remember, simple is good. You want to be able to define the process and where this method really becomes valuable is when it becomes difficult to define the process outcomes. That's when you really need process mapping with this noun verb methodology. Noun verb is process improvement in its rawest form. We are trying to find out what people are producing from the activities they are carrying out. 
This is why process mapping is so valuable. It's simplicity meets clarity in your organization. So what's next in the process? We have the equipment, but that's not going to be enough to make a hot drink. We need the ingredients. We need the water, the cocoa, the powder, the tea bag, coffee powder, sugar, milk, etc. So our next activity will be to gather the ingredients. Gather being the verb. Therefore, the deliverable will be ingredients. This is simple and obvious, which is the best type of process mapping. As you can see, I've run out of a bit of space here, uh, but the good thing is with process mapping, if you're doing it with post-it notes or on a whiteboard, is that you can easily just remove and replace. Cool, now we finally get to make the drink. Our next activity will be called Combine Ingredients and Equipment. And there you have it. Right from the start, the first deliverable, which is a thirsty person, right through to having your hot drink, we've managed to map a process, we've included a decision, we've included deliverables, all in the blue, and we've cl uh, included our activities, which are easy to see in the green. And this way you're able to see uh, a process in its totality, and you're able to identify the value adding processes, which are the deliverables, and the ones that uh, will be causing the waste in your organization, the activities, these three. As I said before, this is a high level approach. There is obviously more involved than just throwing all the ingredients listed together and having your hot drink. There is measuring the specific amounts, boiling the water, the order these ingredients will go together, etc. And these can all be mapped using the same process. The activity combined ingredients and equipment, shown here, would be absolutely the perfect place for a drill down map that would go into greater detail on how to map, uh, make the, the hot drink or you could attach a procedure or work instruction that has this in more detail. By starting with the first and last deliverables, a thirsty person and a hot drink at the end here, it is easier to stay within the scope of the process map. Now, we started with a thirsty person, we ended with the hot drink, and we filled in the middle bits as we went. This is great process mapping. At Triasta, we tend to map end-to-end -end processes and connect them together with off-page connectors. So in this process, we have make a hot drink, but your next might be to consume a hot drink, and even after that, clear up the mess from the hot drink, and so on and so on. If you would like more info on the best tips for process mapping, make sure you visit our blog page or download our Process Mapping Shapes white paper. We have tons of advice on process mapping, uh, the do's, the don'ts, and the software to use. Well, thanks very much for watching and leave a comment if there's anything else you might want to see in our next video. Um, also, please like and subscribe to get new videos every week. See you later, guys.